Hey, welcome back everybody. Another diesel engine assembly video for 1113. We will build upon the last video in which we reconditioned the radiator surround, so it's time to start putting some pieces in there. Now, I briefly mentioned in the last video how the oil cooler had some old dried oil down there in the corner, and we're gonna have to take a look at it. Sure enough, I did find a leak where this tube goes down into the header plate right at the base where it curls around at the front. Minor little pinhole leak there, just enough to create some air bubbles when it was under pressure. So, well, to be honest with you, I was in a bad mood because my oil cooler did in fact have a leak and Senior happened to be in a bad mood because his Super M project had a very minor coolant leak from a cover on the side. So I was kind of tired of looking at 1113. He was kind of tired of looking at the M. I went out and fixed the minor coolant leak on the M. He stayed in here and fixed the minor oil leak on my oil cooler. We each needed a change of scenery, so I guess it all worked out in the end. No video of the process, unfortunately. You can see a little bit of solder down there. He's a lot better at soldering than I am, so we got her all fixed up. And about 24 hours ago, I put about 13 pounds of pressure on this thing, and you can see we're still registering a solid 12 and a half. If that's all, the more that leaked out in that time, I'm considering that it's fixed. I probably have that much leak in the gauge, so we'll take all the air out. With the gauges off, I'll point out once more this is a really clean straight core considering these being up in the front of the machine they usually always incurred some sort of damage this one has remained almost fully intact with the exception of that little leak down there that could have been due to vibration or just plain years of being on the front of a tractor but honestly I was surprised senior was able to plug that up um nine times out of ten trying to repair leaks on these oil coolers is nearly impossible one of the few words I could borrow from the Rick Bork channel and use on this channel it's usually a dumpster fire when you go in and try and fix one of these because you have oil that remains in these header plates and in these tubes and you try to solder that it'll wick into the joint compromise it most times you never even get those sealed up again so props to senior i couldn't have done that good of a job on this there's no way so we're going to put this on the machine and we're going to see if it eventually starts leaking and if it doesn't all well and good if it does start to leak again we're going to do the oil cooler bypass on this which I know I'm Mr. Originality, but that is honestly a Caterpillar sanctioned repair. I think by the 1950s, the engineering department had put out a couple of service bulletins saying how oil coolers on these early diesels was basically deemed or found to be not necessary. So one of the things that led up to that discovery was the improvements in engine oils. Even by the 1950s, they were light years ahead of what they had in you know 38, 39 when this thing was built. And well, if you're gonna do the bypass, it's not as easy as just blocking the lines. Well, you have two options. You can either disconnect the cooler lines out to the core and just make a custom one that loops from the one port to the other, and the thing just doesn't know that it's bypassing the core. If you want to plug where the lines come out of the oil filter base, you have to take the cans off and remove that oil cooler bypass valve. Once you remove that bypass valve, you can cap these right off, and it just comes from the oil pump into the filter base, gets filtered, and onto the engine. So I'll pop a link up right here to when I was assembling this oil filter base. You can see that oil cooler bypass check that I'm talking about. The varied number of oil cooler base, sorry, oil, oil filter bases the cat had over the years dictates that that bypass is going to be in a different spot on just about any other style d2 you have so you can't take the location of the check on this one as a one size fits all but that's the general routine if you want to cap these off remove that check you're all good if i was to bypass this the cooler would stay on the lines would stay on i'd remove that check but i'd plug those ports internally with the line still there so it still looks like it's all there and complete but we'd be bypassed and well, that would solve any potential leaks we could ever have. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. If it does, we will cross that bridge when we get there. So with all that rather unnecessary talking out of the way, we'll start by putting the oil cooler core onto the radiator surround. And we'll put the mesh grill screen on next because that will also secure the oil cooler core. We'll go over here to the hardware tray. 
Hard to believe it, but it takes that many fasteners just to secure an oil cooler and a radiator core into one of these surrounds. But I have these cap nuts that will thread onto the ends of the studs, retain that grill screen and oil cooler. And another indicator of first gen D2 is a grill screen that has this bump out on the bottom here and then this bump out here because they have that early style cooler core where the outlets go back through the surround along the side of the radiator core. This was typical or this was standard for tractors 5J1 to 5J1275. So the first 1275 units all had this early style first gen cooler core under this mesh screen. So we'll get these tightened down later. You can still see some of the old brush strokes of the black accents somebody put on these slats at one time. That's the kind of stuff I love. Gosh, I could just look at, look at stuff like that all day. Love it. Okay, so everything's tight on the front. I've flipped it over, of course. Now is when I want to put the radiator core in. And I remember that core was a really tight fit coming out of here because of course, the way these insulator pads are so close to that bottom tank, you hardly have any room to tilt that thing up at the base and pull it out at all. So I'm expecting going back in, I'm probably going to have to fight it almost as much, which I hope I don't have to. But the way we're going to have to do it, of course, bring it in top first and get that filler neck started through the hole in the top of the surround here. Try and move that, you know, up as far or in as far as you can, and then hopefully let that back drop down. Of course, any square or rectangular object, once you start tilting it, it gets taller because those corners start coming around. So that's where I ran into trouble before. Really don't want to damage that new car. We'll just go easy with it. And I'm just going to take my time, stop frequently, and just have a look at everything. Honestly, it's not going in that bad. I shouldn't say it. I should not even say it out loud. I think the only damage was to my thumb. <laughs> like I said, getting that, that corner in past the high point, once it goes, goes really nice. So we're down against the insulators. It looks like our bolt holes are all lining up down each side. Hopefully it's still good, huh? Back to the hardware tray again. So we have these tapered head machine screws, there's 12 of them. There are six down each side, two, two, and two, and then same for the other side. Hold that core to the surround, and we have some insulator pads to go in there. Now here's what the old ones look like, and they're the same style of belting that was down in the bottom down there that I replaced. So they're right on about eighth of an inch thick. So I cut some new ones, again, out of the same style of belting that I made the new pads for in the bottom. You can see thicknesses are pretty close to the same. So these are all about eighth inch. They're all uniform, so we'll just do a check here. And it's looking like that one's good. That's all we'll need for that one. It's good for that one. Check the other side here without moving the core too much. That's a just a perfect fit there already. A little bit tight there, but no problem. Better than being too loose. And a nice little drag right there. So. I think my eighth inch pieces of belting will be fine. I was prepared to back them up maybe with a little bit of gasket material if I had to go a little bit thicker. I don't think we're gonna have to worry about that. So start popping all these in, get that core bolted to the surround. 
Change of venue, of course, uh, all the insulator pads are in and all the machine screws, nuts and washers are started. I'm gonna tighten these down with everything upright so that if there is any kind of weight to the core where it wants to actually you know, sit down on those insulator pads down there, it's gonna be already in the fully down position by the time I tighten these up. Granted, the tapers on the heads of these machine screws are gonna wanna self-center anyway, but I figured it just, it doesn't hurt. We'll do it this way. So I'm just going to stricken this one a little bit here. There we go. Just getting these machine screws centered up so that the tapers all seem to align. And we're just going to slowly go around, tighten all this down. So with that, the core is in the shell. Man, I'm happy with how all that went together. Insulators are fitting just perfectly. Bolts, nuts, washers, everything exactly like it should. Happy so far. I couldn't ask for anything better. And the insulators I made for the bottom look about right. It was not overly difficult to get the core put in there and everything looks like it's making contact just like it should. So next step is going to be fan shroud. This is an earlier style where it's two halves. Now, let's see, this one had a little bit of a wrinkle. Yeah, right down there. We need to kind of straighten that out a little bit, so we'll get that done here real quick. Got a little bit of a curl on this edge we need to protect, so we can't just hammer it all back flat again. So I'm just hanging it right over the edge of the vice jaws. Yeah, we're getting there. It's got to come down a little bit more yet. All right, all the hammering work is done. So I'm going to get these fan shrouds attached to the core. And I want to show you guys something here. You can just take all these bolts and start each one by hand. Everything about this core has just been fitting perfectly with no problems. Everything, I mean these bolt holes, everything just, it all just lines up just like it should. Like you just went down to the factory and bought this core right from a vintage Caterpillar dealer. Here's the piece we straightened. Looks like that's going to line up pretty well. Now look at this. You see how that overflow tube lines up perfectly with the relief that was cut in the shroud. You can see it comes down and it solders to the side and then it comes back around here and you can put that on and look at it's perfect. I mean Glenn just nailed that. I, <laughs> I don't even know how without having the shrouds on hand I just don't know how that ended up just in the perfect place but it did. And starting all these bolts you need to remember this thing was completely recorded. It's a brand new car with the original bottom tank, the original side pieces, the original top tank. All of this stuff was apart and it was all soldered back together. And just by the way, all of these bolts start by hand. I didn't have to elongate a single hole. I didn't have to file anything. I didn't have to tweak anything. Everything is exactly as it was. That doesn't happen by accident. That is mad respect i mean oh my god they just glenn just did a perfect job on this the way you can just put all this together and it just fits it doesn't fight you you don't have to modify anything it's uh it's craftsmanship like i said props that's uh i'm impressed we'll just say that i'm impressed all right let's stand this up it's starting to get heavy. There we go. Have a look at it. I don't know about you, but I like it. I suppose 
Nothing left to do now but put it on the front of the engine, right? flat lower radiator support casting really comes in handy. You just kind of set it on there and guide it right in. One important thing, have all the proper length bolts on hand because if they're too long you can go up in there and hit that bottom plate that I put the new insulator pads on and actually start pushing that up into the core. Just about down to the last bolt eight of them total down here and you have to get everything lined up pretty well because there's not a lot of wiggle room with these holes so there we go we're pretty much finger tight on all eight that's probably how we're going to leave this for now Okay, everybody, we got it. Radiator's on. 1113's engine grew up a little bit here tonight. Definitely adds quite a lot of bulk to the front end, but oh man, I love this. I just, I wouldn't trade the finish on this thing for the world. Love it, love it, love it. Nice. So, yeah, everything fit just right. And I did go back and tighten those bolts on the bottom. See, I was thinking that maybe I would need to move this around a little bit, side to side, fore and aft, to get everything to fit right. But those bolts fit so tight in those holes down there that it wasn't going to move around anyway. So I went ahead and tightened the bottom. And a lot of hookups left to do yet. I have a couple of braces on the top that go from here to there and there because it's, uh, it's a little bit springy up there yet. You do need that support. Some of those pieces are missing. It was kind of cobbled when we brought 1113 home anyway, and I might have to do some fabrication in there because I have not been able to find those pieces anywhere, but we will cross that bridge next time. I have the hookups for the, uh, the inlet at the top and then the outlet at the bottom, a couple hoses that go over to the other side. So there's a lot of gaskets and clamps and short hoses and outlets and pipes and braces and everything else. That's where that other pipe goes there. So now that stuff's too hard to get at. A lot of that detail stuff we're going to cover next time. And you guys might have noticed these oil cooler ports have just kind of been pointing wherever. That's because I'm not going to fully tighten either one of these until I have the cooler lines cleaned up and we're ready to final position everything to mate those up to those fittings. So I've just had them threaded in there just to keep debris out of that cooler. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, I like these earlier style stamped radiator shells better than the later style cast iron ones. Now granted, cast iron ones were a lot stronger and they were a lot cheaper to make. Cast a bottom tank, machine it. Cast a couple side places, machine them. Cast a top tank, machine that. Bolt the core in the middle of them, you're done. But it doesn't catch my eye like all of these stamped tin tags and the stampings that went into that shell and this grill guard, the screen and everything that's in there. Tag on the top, it just, Granted, the cast iron ones were all around better, but they just don't have the same kind of personality that these earlier ones do. So, and then that radiator, the way it's all soldered together, everything fits just fine. A lot of craftsmanship goes into an old engine like this, and I swear I'm living in the wrong time. Our blow molded plastic throwaway disposable world we have now, it's not for me. What can I say? I was born at least 50 years too late, but that's a topic for another time. All right, so we got a lot more work left to do on 1113's radiator, but the bulk of it's on there. I just can't quit looking at it. Oh, that looks nice. It's growing into that stand I made. Stand doesn't look too oversized anymore, does it? <laughs> so and once we get the starting engine put on the back back here, uh, that's going to build it up at least that tall and at least out to each side of the bell housing wide. So 
we'd be looking at a pretty good unit if I can ever get those parts back for the machine shop. So, so yes, still waiting on that. And I know there's been some questions on it lately. So anyway, I'm rambling. I've talked long enough. Thanks for watching, everybody. Till next time.